welcome to This Week in Gallup. I'm Barbara Stanley and we have a great program for you tonight. One of my favorite, favorite people in Gallup, New Mexico is here. Uh, Ralph Richards, for all of you that do not know, and I don't think that's, pr that's probably nobody in Gallup, <laughs> but uh, Ralph owns Earls. And you also are the president right now of the UNM Gallup uh, Advisory Board. That's correct, Barbara. Right. And how long have you been on the advisory board? I've been on it 10 years, and I've been a chairperson for uh, eight years, Barbara. Okay. So. And so uh, I'm assuming that they've gotten a lot done in eight years. Yes, we have. We got a lot of great things done in eight years, and it's uh, been a oh. wonderful experience. It still is. I got two more years in my tenure. I don't know if you're aware of it. It is elected position. We're put in office by the voters. And uh, I've run now. This is my third term. So I have served almost 12 years here. And okay. I plan on finishing my tenure. And then we'll see what happens. Well, that, uh, you know, this sort of gets in your blood. And now you know colleges and, you, yes. and uh, community colleges. So uh, we're, we're hoping that you decide to pick up the, uh, the gauntlet and run again. Well, we're going to have to see, you know, uh, we used to have four of us down at Earl's working the business, and now I'm the, I'm the last, last dog of war left, <laughs> and it's a war zone. <laughs> well, I always told everybody, Ralph, you know, that business, does, you don't own that business, it, it owns, owns you. you. Yes, it does. So, yes, it but does. anyway, uh, we've been, we've had a long, long, long from spring until now. Uh, you started the uh, branch up again in September? Yes, we did. Okay. We actually never were closed. Oh, you were never closed? No, we were never closed. We had a summer semester. We weren't closed then. Of course, most of this was online, you know, and now we're into what we call a hybrid mode where we have online and face-to-face -face instruction. All right, so you, you've had classes right through the, the coronavirus whole COVID, The whole COVID, yes, ma'am. There was never any cancellation of any of our scheduled classes. Okay, that's a really, really good thing to know. Uh, the hybrid is the where we go part online and part in the classroom. That's correct. That's correct. And how how did you decide? I mean, did you do this alphabetically? Because you have to have social distancing, don't you? We do social distancing, and it's limited in the classroom in different times, similar to what some school districts are doing throughout the country. Uh, my daughter teaches in San Antonio, Texas. You know, Mondays and Wednesdays, certain amount of kids come and. Tuesdays and Thursdays, another amount of kids come. Right. So there's only nine children in a classroom at a, at a time. Okay. And of course they practice the social distancing. I don't know if they have the plexiglass <laughs> and all that good stuff because I haven't been in their classroom for quite a while, but you know, we have it to flip flopped if you want to call so it So you, you just, but is it by alphabetical or is it? I am not too sure how they select okay, that there, process. How many people are in a classroom when they're there? It all varies. I wouldn't say no more than 10 to 12. Okay. Yeah, our, our classrooms are a little bit larger than a normal classroom in a school. Right. But uh, they're not that much bigger, Barbara, you know. And so we've got, but we've got all of the proper things happening yes. in, in those it, it's classrooms. It's a good matrix the way it works out. Okay. And of course, it's also an option, just like with the school district, uh, you know, you don't have to be there. You, you can stay online. And this is, you've, you're you offering all courses, so there's yes, all of the programs yes. are, are being fully met. Yep. Well, first, I'd like, to, I'd like to thank you for asking us here tonight. It's been a while since uh, we've probably given a community update you know, to the public, mainly because of the scenario that we're all underneath. But uh, I do want to thank you, Barbara, on behalf of not only myself, but Dr. Mom. Dr. Mom, is, as I mentioned to you earlier, he has restrictions that right. prohibit him from main campus doing Zoom meetings only. But I also want to thank my advisory board. Uh, I want to mention all of them. I got Priscilla Smith. She's been with us quite a, a few years. I have Terry Garcia from Migo. I got Becky April and then Edmund Yazzie. And I want to thank our faculty and our staff, and, and I really want to thank our students. I mean, it was uh, fantastic the support they've given us and the turnout that we've had. That's a, that was one of my questions, is, is how is the enrollment? Is Enrollment's the enrollment great the, for, the, for what we're under. Uh, we're right at 2,200 students for the fall semester, and uh, that's about 85% where we normally are. So uh, I can't complain. You know, I was scared to death that we were going to be down in the 40s and 50s, and but we're up there, you know, and uh, 
Well, now the Middle College High School is also your, those students are being uh, FTE'd in, that's full-time equivalent. Yes. And so they are uh, college students part-time and high school students part-time. That's correct. Part yes. So their, their FTE is divided between those two that, institutions. That's correct. Yes, ma'am. So how is that enrollment? It's, it's fantastic. We have about, uh, it was kind of later on in my little scenario I have in front of me, but we have uh, 120 in our Miller College High School, and that's underneath Rob Hunter, and that uh, is doing extremely well. Their graduation rate is in the 90s. I want to say 96, 97, it varies from year to year. And some of you that are not aware of Miller College High School, it's a great opportunity for young students you know, especially in the high school level, and they can get started now up, up to the 10th grade. And what basically, as Barbara mentioned, they're taking high school colleges classes and they're also taking college accredited co classes. So when they graduate high school, they have their associate degree, which is a ton of savings to parents. Right. You know, because they walk right in and then they can start taking their Degree well, courses. and you do have, an, I mean, there is a firmer agreement now than there has been in the past with UMM main campus to accept those credits, yes. Ralph, yes. so that, that um, I would assume that you have counselors with those students so that their program is focused in the college area and they're taking and picking up all of their basics. Barbara, our, our uh, acceptance on our credits uh, in the past, and I'm not going to mention anything, but uh, it was a little troublesome. But now we have unilateral agreements with numerous universities, and they get all full credit for the accredited courses that they take at higher ed levels when they're in high school. Now, and the middle college high school, there is no um, cost for the college courses, is there? That's correct. So That's that correct. is they're in they're accepted in the middle college high school. They re yes. can re receive college credits and high school credits, and there is no no cost no. associated. Okay. Even their books are purchased. Every everything is purchased. There's no uh, you know you don't have to go out and pay two three hundred dollars for an instruction book. You know they're all provided, and, and you know it's just a great program. And I encourage you know I encourage Rob Hunter. He's the the principal down there. You know, to expand the numbers, and of course now the state of New Mexico has limited the amount of numbers statewide that uh, right. our young students can participate in these type programs. And it, it's a great program, the same thing with our McKinley Account Academy. That's what I was going to ask yeah. about next. Is We have about 400 students in that right now. All right, and they yeah. are on an FTE kind yes. of situation yes. also? Yes, and they're oh. bust in, and the best thing about that uh, Superintendent Hyatt, he worked with us on this, and one of my main concerns, Barbara, when I got on, our, on, on that board, is so many of our young people couldn't pass the, the entrance exam. We had like an 87, 88 percent failure. And what was happening is these people had to go back to high school at our community campus. So both these programs that we're talking about help these students prepare themselves better to take higher ed courses. Well, you know, I think probably the big, big deal is that the expectations. Right. The, the students have better expectations, the parents have different expectations, and the staff of these two groups has different right. expectations than you do in the normal run of the mill. Well, the good thing about McKinley County is just not limited to the local area. They bus students in from Tehachie, Crown Point, from all over the McKinley County School District. Right. And they're bused in, they do 10 courses there, and uh, it, it's a wonderful program. Now, they get exposure to college courses. Right. Uh, they do not walk out of their, their senior year of associate degree unless somebody was just very, very proactive. Right. But they do get exposure to these credit courses and they walk out there with some credit courses completed. Well, they walk out with some credit yeah. courses as Something opposed to... Something better than nothing, Barbara. Yeah, well, <laughs> well I mean, the, yeah. uh, you know, the English and the math and the history, yeah. all of those courses can be received at your two-year community college at a cost of much, much less. Yes, yes, people don't realize that, uh, you know, I've been on here eight years uh, as chair, and we have not raised our tuition now for the last five years. And, your t and the community college tuition is 
about what 70 30 percent less than at Maine, least, Kansas. At least depends where you go to school. Yeah. <laughs> now, if you go to Notre Dame, we're probably about 70 percent well, less. Well, I mean, <laughs> of, of the main campus yeah. here. Yes. So yes. that, uh, and you do have agreements with the, all of the state colleges that they'll accept the two-year programs. Yes, yes, ma'am. We uh, we started that back during Dr. Dyer's tenure, and we got a little bit of coalition going, but now it's been completed and uh, it's doing very well. Uh, we have no problem. Uh, once in a while, there's some little kicks, but uh, we get them straightened out. You know, I found that uh, one of the big things that we didn't think about was we had a, an agreement with Maine Campus that they would accept all of the basics, you know, the English, the math, etc. What they didn't tell us and what we didn't know was that there were courses that students wanted to use in their major and the departments were not allowing these credits and so that was a big big stumbling block Ralph. we've got that turned around barbara and all our courses are allowed for major credit courses now so that's uh, that's know, a really uh, really good thing it's has been a good thing it's been a lot of hard work uh you know i mentioned dr mom uh, he's just been fantastic uh, i i feel like uh we're very blessed to have such a fine young man in our in our community, and, and we've changed so many things during our tenure uh, on the advisory board. Uh, we've got a lot more stability. You know, I mentioned to you earlier that we had changed uh, in 15 years. We had like seven different. Uh, at that time, they were called executive directors. Now they're called chancellors. We got that changed. Something a little more prestigious, but uh, to have that many in that sort of time frame. You never got any continuity of consistency and you never got any direction moving forward because every time it changed, especially the last two, uh, you know, they were just dropped at the top of the hat. We weren't consulted or nothing as an advisory board. And in our operating agreement, it specifically states right there that we would be consulted upon the recommendation of the advisory board. Right. Well, we weren't even asked. They right. just dropped them. You know, and I say they, I mean main campus and I try not to get involved in politics over there because I'm busy enough. I don't need that. <laughs> but uh, I've gotten in the middle of it a couple of times. And when, when we got on board, and man, I'm trying to think who was chair when I got on board. It was Edmund Yazzie. He was the chairperson at that time. And it bothered me that our operating agreement, main campus, had not been uh, renovated since 1967. Yeah. So one of the first tasks I took on when I became chair was... Uh, to work on that operating grid and get us a little bit stronger position with main campus. And I'm, I'm going to say this, and I mean this wholeheartedly, and I don't know how many people are out there listening tonight, but we need more local governments at our community campuses, not just UNM Gallup, across the state of New Mexico. Because here for many, many years we have been run by main campus. Do you think they really care about what's happening in Gallup, New Mexico? You think they care what's happening in Los Angeles or I mean, Los Alamos or in, in any of these outside Las, Las Vegas? They don't. You know, we're just numbers to them. And better now because we have better working agreement and we have better operating agreement. There's still things on it I'd like to change. <laughs> There's but, still uh, things. You, it's a slow process, Barbara. <laughs> we're going to take a quick commercial break. We come back, we're going to find out some of the really, really great programs that have come back to Gallup. So please stay tuned.
Hi, welcome back to This Week in Gallup. I'm Barbara Stanley. Uh, Ralph Richards is with me this evening, and we are talking about UNM Gallup, and uh, you have some more people that you want to thank. Well, you know, Barbara, I wanted to mention, and we haven't got a lot of uh, recognition on this, but before the COVID hit, we, we, we've been growing every year. Uh, we had a 13% increase in, in enrollment, and we had the highest increase in enrollment in the state. And I was real impressed, and I, I do attribute a lot of that to Dr. Mom. Uh, you know, you got to realize that we're 94% uh, minority or different racial ethnic groups, and to get these people these opportunities to excel, it means a lot to me. That's one of the reasons I'm on the University of New Mexico Gallup campus, uh, sitting on their on their board of advisors and as their chair, is is to help young people succeed. And we were very blessed. Uh, right now, we're currently running uh, over 19 associate programs, 17 certificate programs, and we have our one bachelor degree program. And that's nursing. The nursing degree, yes, ma'am. Now we lost that, didn't we, Ralph? Yes, we did. Yes, they lost their certification just when I got on. It took us about a year and a half to get it back, uh, and now we're we're just doing great with that whole program. We created seven new new programs ranging from secondary ed education, welding technology, and our EMT services. We just uh, hired a, a gentleman, he used to be fire marshal. I don't know if you remember uh, Jacob LaCrosse? Yeah. He was the fire marshal. Right. Well now, he teaches our EMT and fire training courses at UNM. So he went from fire marshal to UNM instructor, and, and it's a good thing. You know, you and I both know how when fire marshal walks in, they go, you go, oh, now what? <laughs> no, 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 I liked them. They, you know, yeah. but they are there for your good, and yeah. they do help you, and they make suggestions, and they give you plenty of time if there is something that needs some attention to I take like care of I like the fire marshal. But, but the, I do have an accolade I want to mention. All right. Allison Begay was one of the first students that graduated from our nursing program with a bachelor's degree. Okay. And this young lady, uh, she's on our website, she has a little short summary of her experience at UNM, but she traveled an hour each day just to come to, to, come to our campus. Everybody in McKinley and, you know, County does that. Yes, people don't realize that, you know, and it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a privilege to come to school, and people take it for granted, and then you have these people that have to drive an hour every day, one way, to come to school. And this Allison Begay, if you have time, folks, please stop and, and read it on UNM Gallup's website. It, it's a really about three-page little summary of her experience at UNM, and it kind of hits the nail on the head as far as the, the, you know, the benefits of having a community comp campus this close. And I, I wanted to mention Cindy Jarvison, yeah. She runs my small business development uh, uh, program down right. at Chamber. That you and I, I believe, were the yes, ones that brought them down there years ago. Yes, we started yeah. that, Ralph. Yeah, and Cindy, Cindy, she uh, just received a, a 2020 New Mexico, New Mexico Small Business uh, Minority Championship Award of the Year. She received that one, and she also got the 2020 Small Business Development Center Excellence and Innovation Award. So I'm real proud of the job that uh, Cindy's doing down there, and she's doing a great job. She's a and, fantastic young yeah, lady. Yeah, she's just yeah, doing she's that. On, she's on here quite often. Yes. Hey, now, one of the things that we need to do, just touch on before we go, um, the coronavirus has hit, this, this since March, has hit Gallup pretty hard. You're in business here. You know how it's impacted business. Do you have ideas, Ralph, how main campus or how what UNM Gallup can help in rebuilding our, our economy in uh, sort of finding new avenues for economic prosperity here? Well, Barbara, first thing on the coronavirus, uh, we handle it uh, very, very cautiously. Uh, we have about 2,800 uh, email hits per day that we send out in our domain. And like say you want to come to campus and you want to go face to face. Well, you get this questionnaire and it asks you yes or no. If you put yes, then you have the survey to fill out. And then once you fill the survey out and you're approved, you get a confirmation number allowing you on campus. Okay. And we average about 180 students a day. You know, and bringing these people back in interaction is going to be slow and long process. You know, uh, as far as this helping with the COVID here, 
We do have COVID test station up there that is run by the health department and it is up in one of our parking lots up and running. We've had, if you remember, it was kind of jumping around. Right. Well, now they're at one place and then okay. that's at UNM Gallup. You know, uh, with all the problems that we've had, we, ha we did get some money to help our students, uh, some CARES money, and half of that money went directly to the students. And that was to help them buy tablets, to do online work, et cetera, help them with their primary needs at home. And that, that's part of it. Uh, you and I were talking in the lobby earlier about education. Nobody was ready for this. And that, like you said, it was all about the hospitals, this the hospital, hospital. Well, what about the people? You know, we got to take care of the people. You know, and we weren't really ready to do online. Nobody was. No. Even in our public school system. No. You know, we all have children, our grandchildren. Of course, you and I now have grandchildren. <laughs> but, you know, you can't even get service in some areas. You know, one of my grandkids lives in Aztec. There's no service. The school district told them to go sit in McDonald's parking lot and yeah. do their schoolwork. You know, it's, it's hard enough to get these young people's attention, let alone sitting in a parking lot because of distractions. You know, and we've been working on making it more better and more remote and providing services and allowing more time for people. Well, I think to, we're all going to have to work together to find some really innovative ways and uh, yeah. positive ways that we can come back from all this, Ralph. Cause it's um, it's going to be a long haul, I think. Well, you know, I think a part of a, like, like our nursing programs and our EMT pro programs that we have now, this will help a lot of people recover because we can provide more services. And I didn't, I, I apologize, I didn't get an exact number. I did miss an Allison Begay. I didn't get an exact number how many students we graduated last semester with the Bachelor's of Science in Nursing. Degree. Well, you know, and these but, kids can go all over the country, yeah. and uh, yes, they can go the firemen could, can go anywhere. The EMTs are always available, but you know, we're we're also going to need programs that people here in Gallup can stay in. You know, uh, I watch a lot of HGTV, and I'm thinking one day, I don't know all the different woods. Right. You know, if what wood is this? What wood is? And so, uh, if you're going to be a woodworker, you have to know all those learn things. Them. <laughs> yeah, you have to learn that. Where do you learn You'll it? You'll find out Barbara Pine isn't the strongest one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't know where to go. Anyway, uh, it, it, we've uh, just about run out of time. I, I did want to mention a okay. couple of things, Barbara. Yep. Do we have time from... Sure, go ahead. Uh, we do have our GOP bond coming up, folks, and uh, we have a, a GOP bond for three millions for here. And when you look at the voting, you won't see a Pacific listing for UNM Gallup, New Mexico. What you will see is a GOP bond for the universities. It's a total of $156 million. There is no tax increase to anyone, but we are at least getting $3 million of that. Uh, I did ask for nine. I mentioned that, but we won't get into that. But uh, if you please support that, I would appreciate this. I get so upset. You have all these politicians, all they want to do is education, education. The key is to education. Yet these are the same people that are making cuts against education. And yet we can go out and do all these new things and all these projects that most of them are non-essential in my book, and yet we're cutting the feet right out from our own children because we aren't providing them with quality education. It's our students and it's our people that we should be looking forward to to help not building a new building. You got it. I got a lot more than that, but we're running out of time. We <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you, this 30 minutes or an hour? Because I had a good hour worth of stuff know, to discuss. I know. Well, it used to, be, it used to be an hour, Ralph, but we, we're down to 30 minutes now. Well, so. Barbara, you know, anybody's welcome to come visit me. Uh, I, I try to give them shoot yep. straight forward and, and tell them the truth. Yep, and that, that's one of the cool things about restaurants is you're, you're always open. Yep. No, yeah. it's um, so you're very available. Well, I do appreciate if everybody's not, if you're support. In town, yeah, if you're in town, if you're in town, you and I both been around a long time, Barbara, and we stay involved in things, and it's because we care and we want to give back to our community. We've both been very blessed in our lives, and I thank God every day for all my blessings, and I thank Him for the great customers I have and the great community I live in. Well, we want to thank you because you've done a really, really good thank job you. at whatever job you take up. So I've had a few hats just like you. <laughs>
with that, uh, we'll say good night. And next week, Bruce Armstrong from GGEDC will be with us. And so we'll be talking uh, about economic development. So uh, if you uh, need a college education, I'd go to UNM Gallup. Thanks for watching and good night.